Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. With respect to Earth R, which of the following statements is R correct? It is an initiative of UNESCO. The event is held biennially, encouraging individuals, communities and businesses to turn off non-essential electric lights for one hour. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is none. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference in the Hindu article. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, this happens to be an initiative of UNESCO. This statement is wrong. Why? That is because the Earth R is a worldwide movement and this happens to be the initiative of the World Wildlife Fund. So it is not UNESCO, but remember it is World Wildlife Fund. So the first statement is wrong. When you look into the second statement, the event is held biennially. No, this is not biennially, but this happens to be an annual exercise. Since it is an annual exercise, the second statement is also wrong, which is why the answer to this would be none. So this happens to be an event which happens on an annual basis. It encourages individuals, communities, businesses to turn off non-essential electric lights for about one hour. This initiative started way back in the year 2007 where in the country of Australia. So on 31st of March 2007, many individuals as well as businesses in Sydney felt that they have to contribute to mitigate the impact of the climate change. So what did they decide? They decided to turn off all the electric lights, non-essential lights for about one hour and give and live in the natural light. So it started in 2007 and after it, it continues to be observed every year on March last Saturday between 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. so that people turn off the electric lights. So this indirectly gives awareness to the people of every country which is contributing to it, observing it and ultimately they contribute to the mitigation of climate change. We know for the fact that we have increasing temperatures, drought light conditions, sea levels are rising as well. All this is because of the climate change. So in an indirect way, what we are doing is turning off the light and we are also significantly contributing to the mitigation of the climate change. It also points out that if we do not change our ways of living, we will live in the dark ages and that is what it points to in the earth are. As part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section what is the theme for this year's Earth R is what you have to put on the comment section. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following are the applications of artificial intelligence? AI can help reduce the possibility of credit card fraud. AI helps individuals and businesses from email spam. AI applications are used in healthcare to build sophisticated machines that can detect diseases and identify cancer cells. Artificial intelligence is used to identify defects and nutrient deficiencies in the soil. AI assists in detecting data overflow in a buffer. Which of the statements are the applications of artificial intelligence? The answer to this is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference to the machine learning. Machine learning happens to be a subset of the artificial intelligence. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, AI can help reduce the possibility of credit card fraud. This statement is right. What exactly happened? There are a number of credit card frauds that take place on the e-commerce platforms. So this AI artificial intelligence can reduce the possibility of the credit card fraud that takes place on the e-commerce portal. And it also ensures that all the scams that are reported on the credit cards can ultimately be eliminated. So the first statement is right. When you look into the second statement, AI helps individuals and businesses from email spam. You have one of the labels on your Gmail. If you have a label and if you look keenly, what you have is a spam folder. What exactly happens? You have the artificial intelligence tools that are able to understand that this is a spam email. So artificial intelligence is used, machine learning is used basically to ensure that there are few illegitimate sources emails which come up and they ultimately go to the spam folder. So this means that they are able to eliminate the spam and this does not occur in your primary folder. So second statement is right. Third statement is also right that AI can be used to build sophisticated machines. It can also detect diseases and identify cancer cells. And when it comes to the fourth statement, 
AI can also be used in agriculture as well. It is used to identify defects and nutrient deficiencies in the soil. This is basically done using computer vision, robotics, machine learning, so on and so forth, where it will be able to analyze if weeds are growing in that particular region. AI bots can also help in harvesting the crops at a higher volume as well. And this is the application of AI when it comes to the agriculture. And finally, AI assists in detecting data overflow in a buffer. Yes, when programs consume more data, than usual this is referred to as buffer overflow the AI can also help in detecting data overflow in a buffer now let's look into the next practice question which of the following provisions were added by the 42nd constitutional amendment act made the president bound by the advice of the cabinet curtailed the power of judicial review under jurisdiction of the supreme court and high court included 14 land reform acts of various states in the ninth schedule empowered the parliament to restrict the fundamental rights of persons employed in intelligence organizations and telecommunication system which of the following provisions were added by the 42nd constitutional amendment the answer to this is one and two only why have we taken this practice question because of the reference in the indian express article this article on the indian express makes a reference to the emergency so if we speak about emergency one major amendment that we have to look at is the 42nd constitutional amendment which is also called as the mini constitution in itself so we have the 50th amendment act of 1984 which empowered the parliament to restrict the fundamental rights of persons employed in intelligence organizations and telecommunication systems yes it is the 50th amendment act and it is not 42nd so the fourth option is eliminated and as part of the assignment you have to put on the comment section what is the third statement we have the third provision the third provision was implemented as part of one of the constitutional amendment which constitutional amendment introduced this provision is what you have to put on the comment section then we have the first and the second statement yes they were added by the 42nd constitutional amendment act so what were the items or the provisions which were introduced what we have is it added three words socialist secular and integrity in the preamble added fundamental duties by the citizens made the president bound by the advice of the cabinet provided for administrative tribunals and tribunals for other matters curtailed the power of judicial review under the jurisdiction of the supreme court and high court facilitated the proclamation of national emergency in part of territory of india did away with the requirement of quorum in parliament and the state legislature provided for the creation of all in the judicial service shortened the procedure for disciplinary action by taking away the right of a civil servant to make representation at the second stage after inquiry so all these provisions were added by the 42nd constitutional amendment act of 1976 and this is generally called as the mini constitution of india as well now let's look into the next practice question Consider the following statements with respect to M. Vishweshwaraya. Vishweshwaraya was appointed Diwan of Mysore by Maharaja Krishna Raja Wadiyar IV. He founded the Century Club and served as its first president in 1917 and 18. He was the chief engineer of the Alamatti Dam. Which of the statements given above is are correct with respect to Sir M. Vishweshwaraya? The answer to this is 1 and 2 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference in the PIB article. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first and the second statement, yes, they are right. But the third statement is wrong. That is because he was the chief engineer of the KRS Dam and not the Alamati Dam. Where is this Alamati Dam? Is what you have to put on the comment section. Across which river this is built? Please put it on the comment section. He was the chief engineer of the KRS Dam is what you have to remember. Let's discuss some of the key facts with respect to Sir M. Vish Vishweshwaraya. Moksha Gundam Vishweshwaraya was awarded Bharat Ratna in 1955. He is widely regarded as the father of modern Mysore. Moksha Gundam Vishweshwaraya built the famous Krishna Raja Sagar Dam in Mysore. When it was constructed, this dam had one of the largest reservoirs in the entire Asia. To raise the food supply level and storage to the highest levels, irrigation system was created with flood gauge, which was installed at Kadavaksala Reservoir near Pune. Then we have the same system which was installed near Pune was also installed at 
Tigra Dam in Gwalior. He was the chief engineer of Lakshmi Talam Dam in southwest Maharashtra. He was serving as the 19th Diwan of Mysore. He was the chief engineer of flood protection system for the city of Hyderabad. So he did work under kingship of Osman Ali Khan to protect the Vishakhapatnam port from sea erosion. Vishweshwaraya developed a system which was successfully installed in Bihar for the location of Mokama Bridge over river Ganges. Vishweshwaraya had shared his technical expertise as well because he has contributed so much to the country and also to the state of Karnataka. There are many educational institutions which are named in honor of Vishweshwaraya. Vishweshwaraya National Institute of Technology, Vishweshwaraya Technological University in Belagavi, Sir and Vishweshwaraya Institute of Technology, University Vishweshwaraya College of Engineering are some of the colleges which are named after him. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following countries share borders with Moldova, Ukraine, Romania, Belarus? Select the correct answer using the code given below. The answer to this is 1 and 2 only. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2008. Let's look into the map. What we have is Moldova and around it what we have is Ukraine on the right which is to the east and Romania on the left which is to the west. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is Aravali Green Wall Project. Let us try and understand what is this Aravali Green Wall Project. This happens to be part of the Ministry of Environment Initiative. What does it want to do? It wants to create green corridors across the country basically to combat land degradation as well as desertification. What exactly happens? You have the Aravali range. Because the Aravali range, the number of trees that were there are gradually decreasing. The number of trees that are there are being felled for other developmental activities what you have is this desertification which is increasing earlier it was at a particular region but now it is increasing as well so it is reaching to the outer barriers as well in order to prevent the desertification in order to prevent the land degradation in order to make sure that this desertification does not increase to other areas what we have is the Aravali Green Wall project so the project covers states like Haryana Rajasthan Gujarat and also the Union Territory of Delhi where this Aravali Hills landscape spans about 6 million hectares of land and this is planning to ensure that more number of trees are built across this particular area. So the project will involve planting of number of native species of trees and at the same time number of degraded forest land will be turned into the fertile lands over a period of time. So the project will also focus on agroforestry, pasture development to enhance the livelihood of the local communities. So what are the objectives of Aravali Greenwall project? Improving the ecological health of the Aravali range, prevent eastward expansion of Thar Desert, reduce land degradation by creating green barriers that will prevent soil erosion, desertification and dust storms. This green wall will help in carbon sequestration and mitigate the climate change and at the same time it will promote sustainable development livelihood opportunities by involving the local communities in afforestation the project will be executed by various stakeholders such as central and state government forest departments research institutes civil society organizations private sector entities and local communities it will contribute to India's commitment under various international conventions such as UNCCD CBD and also UNFCC it will enhance India's image as a global leader in environmental protection and green development. So this will not only increase the green cover and the biodiversity in the Aravali region but it will also increase afforestation, reforestation, restoration of water bodies and ultimately mitigate the impact of climate change. The project as we discussed will also help the local communities. They would be able to empower themselves. They will be able to provide employment opportunities for themselves and it will also give them a fixed source of income and also boost the ecosystem services in this particular locality. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this topic. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.